Seriously, don't buy a used MacBook right now. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you which models are a no-go. So let's uncover it. Hello everyone, my name's Mike. And here at Tech Kamoon, we uncover all kinds of technology. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. And don't forget to hit that like button to tell YouTube that you're enjoying this video and that you're a bit of a tech junkie. So no, this video isn't clickbait, but was actually inspired by you guys asking me about used MacBooks on the market. And when I actually did my research on this, I was really really shocked. Now I'll give my recommendations on which MacBooks to avoid as well as some that you should go for throughout this video. So let's start with what I'm actually talking about because normally I advocate buying used or refurbished. I mean I've got a whole bunch of videos on older MacBooks that I use and the reason why is because you can grab yourself a great deal on slightly older hardware without actually losing out on much performance or specs. However the M1 MacBook Air and Pro giving us this huge performance in CPU and GPU and the fact that they're only around a thousand pounds or even less when you have a student discount. Certain MacBooks at the moment are a definite no-go. Just recently Apple has just dumped a whole bunch of refurbished M1 MacBook Airs selling for $850. That's only $50 cheaper than the M1 MacBook Air with a student discount and that's for the rest of us. So which models should you avoid in this case? First let's look at the Intel MacBook Air 13 inch with the 10th generation Intel processor as this was launched in April of 2020, so nearly a year ago, which means that there should be some good savings, but certain models are definitely not worth buying at the moment. So firstly, I would avoid the 16 gigabyte and or the 512 gigabyte upgraded models as on the used market, they're going for between 800 to 900 dollars or pounds if you're in the UK. And this is just a bad deal because right now on eBay or on the refurbished uh, market with uh, Apple, you can buy a base MacBook Air M1 for $850 or pounds, which is again, just so much more worth it than that Intel MacBook. So yes, it might not have 512 gigabytes of storage, but this computer will run much faster and much cooler than let's say an Intel i5 or i7 16 gigabyte MacBook Air. This also leads me on to saying, don't buy the MacBook Air i7 10th generation Intel because they are just the worst value for money in terms of price to performance. Now, if you can't afford the 850 or $900, then if you can, get yourself that 2020 i5 MacBook Air for between 600 to at the maximum 700, then this isn't gonna be a bad deal. But if you can, I would recommend saving up for a bit as the M1 is just three to four levels above the Intel version. Now, the Intel MacBook Pro 2020 with the eighth generation Intel processors, the two port model is also one that you shouldn't buy right now. They are going for around 900, which isn't worth it in my opinion, because again, even though you miss out on the 500 nits of brightness, which is hundred nits more than the M1 Air, and you can only connect one display on the M1 Air and M1 Pro, you're gonna be getting much better performance on the M1 Air than on the Pro. And it will age better than the Intel models, giving you potentially an extra year or two of software support. This also goes for the 16 gigabyte upgraded models and any of the CPU upgraded models as well of the eighth generation processors because they are even more expensive and they're no faster or cooler than the M1 Air. Now you might be saying, what about the four port model 10th generation as they are faster than the eighth generation, right? So this laptop is a little bit more complicated. So if you look online, the i7 with 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of SSD is selling for around 1,700 and the i5 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of SSD is selling for about 1,500. So on the surface, it looks like a great deal because you're getting the 10th generation processor and you're getting tons of RAM and tons of storage for not a bad price to be fair. The problem is, is that with the M1 MacBook with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and one terabyte of SSD, this is a couple of hundred bucks more than the i7 model. And the 16 gigabytes of unified memory is very similar to having 32 gigabytes of RAM on an Intel system. Plus the M1 processor is even faster than the i7 10th generation on the 13 inch four port model. If you look at the 16 gigabyte Intel model, you would be better off actually going for an eight gigabyte M1 MacBook Pro or even an eight gigabyte M1 MacBook Air. It's still gonna be quicker than an Intel four port model. And trust me, I have one in the back. That's why I can have two displays back there. Plus, 
because even though it's going to be, let's say in certain configurations, a couple of hundred bucks more, you are going to have honestly a much better experience on the M1 than any of those 13 inch Intel models. Now, if you're on a tighter budget and you can't stream for the M1 MacBook Pro, then as I said before, the M1 MacBook Air is going to be a great option. I actually found that the base M1 MacBook Air performed better than my Intel i5 16 gigabyte of RAM MacBook Pro 13 inch. So this is a great alternative. And if you want to save even more money, then go and buy external SSD storage instead of buying Apple's own internal storage. Now, as I said, it's a little bit more complicated though, as if you are going to be spending around $1,700 to $2,000, then I would actually say if you can, you're better off waiting. The higher end 13 inch with the four ports, uh, which attracts a lot of professionals as it typically allows you to connect lots of different peripherals and connects up obviously a couple of displays, but Right now, there's no update for the M1 version yet, but Apple will update this model to the Apple Silicon chips. So if you just wait, this means that you'll get much faster performance than the M1. You'll have the ability to connect up potentially two or more displays. And with four ports, you're not gonna have the same issues as with the two port models on the M1. Plus there's even rumors that it's gonna have a bigger screen and extra ports and stuff like that. So it's gonna be pretty crazy. And all of this, if you could just save up a couple of hundred bucks more, which you're going to have to be waiting for that model anyway. So if you're looking at buying one now, then just hold off for that upgraded model from Apple, because at that price point, you're really going to regret buying anything else until that model comes out. Now, in terms of other models, I would avoid the 2019 MacBook Air in any configuration because it has the butterfly keyboard and that is just too unreliable and the performance is just nowhere close to what you're getting with the M1 MacBook Air. Now, when I was looking at the 2019 and 2020 MacBook Pros, again, I would just avoid those due to the same reasons because they have the butterfly keyboard, which again, isn't that reliable. Unless you can maybe pick one up for under 600, then I guess this would be a good buy, but just be aware that that keyboard issue has been lingering for a little while now. So what about the big boys? What about the bigger models that have more performance than the 13-inch? Intel models that have a dedicated GPU and a bigger screen, this must be a good buy at this point right now, correct? Before we get into the rest of the video, I want to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this part of the video. Now more than ever, we are so reliant on our internet and without a VPN, you can be exposed to online threats like identity theft, ISP tracking, and even price discrimination when you're shopping online. With Surfshark VPN, it protects your information by encrypting all the data that you send through the internet, keeping anyone unwanted from seeing it. Unlike a lot of VPNs that I've tried before, Surfshark is fast and reliable and can be installed on an unlimited amount of devices. They don't track, monitor, or store anything that you do online, meaning that there's no connection or activity logs. Use the link down in the description below or use promo code TECHMIKE to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Thanks again, Surfshark, for supporting the channel. So right now, the 2018 and 2019 i9 15 inch models are selling on the used market for around 1700 to 1800 and the i5 models are selling for a couple hundred quid less than that the i9 model gpu performance is a little bit slower compared to the m1 and the gpu performance when looking at let's say the vega uh, pro 560x is basically the same in real world towards the M1 MacBook Pro. So then looking at that, does that mean then, so the extra screen size, the extra ports, obviously it makes it better than obviously the M1 MacBook Pro if they're basically the same in terms of performance. Again, no, because Firstly, the 15 inch MacBook Pros, they just get really loud every time you're doing anything intensive. And secondly, if you're spending between $1,700 to $2,000, then just wait for the Apple Silicon 14 inch to come out because this will be way faster than the MacBook Pro M1 and will be much quicker than the 2018 or 2019 15 inch models. Plus, you're gonna get a few extra years of software updates compared to buying a 2018 and 2019 15 
15 inch model. Plus you will have the butterfly keyboards on the 15 inch models, which are just unreliable and should just be avoided, especially if you're gonna be keeping this thing as your daily driver for a long time. You're probably looking at this model because you're planning on using it for your professional work and you don't want to suddenly have your keyboard stop working when you've got an important project deadline coming up. I also want to mention that with these smaller machines quickly outpacing the larger models, the 15 inch models will depreciate much faster and harder and it means that it will be much harder to shift later down the line because of these new Apple Silicon Macs. When it comes to the 16 inch MacBook Pro 2020, you can pick up an i9 model with a 550M for around $2,000 and these machines are really fast. However, in certain applications, the M1 MacBooks are actually faster and there are certain applications where the 16 inch Intel model is faster. So it really does trade blows with it. And the fact that you are getting a bigger screen, better speakers with the new Magic Keyboard, which is the same as on the M1 MacBook Pro, then it means that you should go for this model over a spec'd out M1 MacBook Pro, right? I actually wouldn't look at either. Again, the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros are coming out this year and it will be priced with the 14 inch around $2,000 or less and the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the Apple Silicon will be priced around sort of the $1,400 mark. This will no doubt beat the Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro and this will have a much longer life. It will also get much better as the apps become more and more optimized for Apple Silicon. So in my opinion, if you can wait don't buy either, see what the 14 inch is like because that's rumored to come out first. And this is going to beat the 16 inch model for sure in terms of performance. Like the M1 MacBook Pro already tra trades blows with it. So I can only imagine that the M1X or whatever it's gonna be called 14 inch is only gonna annihilate that model. One thing I haven't mentioned throughout this whole video is battery life. One huge reason you should wait or go for an Apple Silicon Mac is battery life. Even with the 15 inch or 16 inch, which has around 60 to 70% a larger battery than the 13 inch models, the 16 inch MacBook Pro only lasts for around four and a half ish hours with heavy use, whereas my M1 Max can last easily over 12 hours with quite heavy use with no issues. This means that you can go for longer work sessions being untethered to a wall plug. Now, if you'd like to see a video on which Macs would be worth buying used, then please leave a comment down below and like this video so I know if it's something that you guys want to see. But as always, this is a discussion, so please leave a comment down below on your thoughts and if you've picked up a Mac recently. Also, check out the links down in the description to support the channel. Honestly, it helps me out. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. I post such great content. If you haven't already, drop me a like, hit that subscribe button, please. You'll love my videos. And if you want to see more videos from me right now, you guys know what to do. There's two videos videos right over here. Absolutely love both of them. So just click on one. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.